You need to go first? You're good. Good. Excuse me. I don't want to read your questions. Okay. I just want to explain. Yeah, I have a lot of uh, I pretty much every episode is a movie. It's like any documentary, you know. So I guess it's all about it. I mean, we've done uh, we did the Demon House documentary, which was a standalone feature film documentary, which is kind of was a particular case. So I'm sure if like some kind of case came about that needed enough coverage that it needed more than just an episode, I'm sure we would entertain the idea. But but Number mainly we're, we're pretty busy filming like it's every yeah. other week and yeah. between filming and the then editing 10, and years. it's just non-stop 10 non -stop. 11 years so i don't even know what my 30s was <laughs> I was working the whole time <laughs> can everybody hear okay yeah okay. we'll project yeah. we'll talk a little louder <laughs> so before you were um, filming for ufc right how did you I got in the Nevada Film Commission and just put my name in there, worked from a PA all the way to coordinating to you name an audio camera. I showed up on my first camera shoot and I looked at the guy and go, I don't know how to do this. So I just went with it and then I ended up helping them out and now the rest is history. So a lot of hard work for like 10, 15 years of just independent work, just trying to make a living. <laughs> I have a question. So how do you guys protect yourself from the energies? Because when you run into the spirit energies and the, the, the negative stuff, do you like sage yourself all the time? Like, what do you guys yeah, do? Yeah, each of us are different. Yeah, right? I do not. I walk out and I kind of say, if you want to follow me home, follow me home. I've done that pretty much since season three. And uh, I tried protection once and it just got worse for me. So I was like, you know what, if I'm going to keep doing this, just go with it. Be part of the experiment. So since then, I've never done anything. I just walk out and go home. And, and for me, like you, Palo Santo, and as a sage, and uh, just prayer, stuff like that. It's not every single episode, but certain locations that we go to, you just feel it. You can feel that something's with you, that you know, or, or maybe your mood's not right, or you're sad, or, or whatever. So I'll clear myself immediately. Yeah, I don't do any uh, particular cleansing either, but I do try to immerse myself in positivity. Like doing stuff you like, and I suggest that for anybody, like going out in the nature, go for a hike. I like to play music and play my dogs, just finding those things that make you happy and are positive. I think uh, kind of brings me back and grounds my energy. Do you each have a favorite piece of equipment that you like to use to find out where the ghosts are, the things that you can recommend? To uh, I always say my body, and then the gear confirms it. But uh, if you're talking gear, I'm, I'm, I just love the spirit box. Like, I'm hear it get a lot of evidence it's like kind of like i should always just have it on me it changes for me because we get so much new tech and stuff but um lately i mean past five years probably the sls camera is pretty incredible and we keep trying to debunk it like there's no way it's gonna you know we've been able to walk through an entire house and nothing forms and then all of a sudden boom just this figure pops up so it's fascinating i would say sls for me yeah i think like both you guys nailed it. I think it starts with your own body once you kind of feel it and kind of, you know, when you bring out equipment to basically verify what you're going through. And the SLS and the stuff I've seen on there has been mind blowing. And then not only do you see it, it happens, but then you can intelligently interact with it too. Like we've had stuff when we wave and it waves back. Yeah. Or, you know, we say, hey, can you walk over here and you see it move over and things like that. Like, like the band. Right. At the oh, jail. Yeah, the band that was amazing jail, when they yeah. we were like, bow for us and bow. Yeah, it, was dan it was doing and like, bow. and the whole team would look like they're playing like guitar. Five figures yeah. all on stage. They just all appeared. That was awesome. That was really incredible. Aaron, what's the scariest place you got put in by yourself? Uh, every time I walk in my house, <laughs> like legit, that's the scariest place I've ever been. Second, uh, well, Zach's museum. I got to say, that museum is probably one of the most scariest things because he has everything there that's cursed in like history. So like trying to go in there, I try not to go in all the time, but when I have to, I'm like, it's like a whole two weeks of just... Bad time when I leave. So it's like thirteen ghosts. He has like containment chambers. Oh yeah. It's, it's, oh legit. If you haven't been there, go there. It is <laughs> yeah. just un unreal. It's crazy. Um, you guys talked about um, doing the four part mini series about the serial killers, and one of them is going to be KJ Holmes. Mm -hmm. I was saying if uh, what your plans are for that episode, and who else you guys would want to uh, you know look into as far as serial killers. 
Uh, the H.H. H. Holmes, I mean, obviously the most famous is, is the hotel, the murder hotel that he had, but unfortunately it's not there anymore. I think there's a bit of a post office left. and We actually looked into it, but it's a post office. It's a post office, yeah. yeah. But uh, we found it's actually not as known, like, but it is historically accurate. He actually rented a home in uh, Juliet, Illinois, and uh, murdered a boy there. Uh, and there's, you know, actual historically that this happened, so we focused on that part of it. In his room, he put his veins on the stovepipe and everything. Right, exactly. Oh, and it was, at first we are like, oh, and then it just happened. It was almost like, I don't know if we said something to piss it or upset it or anything. I don't know. It just was the most scariest, terrifying moment for me. One of them. Yeah. There's been um, a lot in the news about the Conjuring House, mm -hmm. um, that the owners are having issues with it. So is that one of the reasons you're going to check it out? Uh, and the, we, we we're the first to get in there in a long time. And to be honest, like, I don't know if you all seen the movie. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. man. Like, it's going to say it's scary, but it's also so iconic. It's kind of an honor to be able to have this opportunity. To, yeah. yeah, to pick up words. But there, and Lorraine left off. Yeah, like, but there right. is a fear of being in that place, especially with us and how we react with ghosts and ghosts react with us. So, like, is this going to fall us? Like, this could be a life-changing moment, which good or probably bad. Not only but, that, yeah. but, but we're gonna. One of our interviews is one of the the daughters that's, yeah. that's in the movie. Uh, the parents. I can't remember her name, but anyway, yeah, she's agreed to talk to us and actually tell her it's a true story. So if we're live next couple months, you know, it went okay, like we're safe, or you'll know. <laughs> How do you overcome some of the challenges when you're on a location shoot and nothing's working right? That happens all the time. Yeah, That's why I'm <laughs> it means, yeah like and gear we, and all that. It's yeah, frustration. We get frustrated. The, no, you know, nothing's really cooking. You're not getting footage that you, you know, you're making an entertaining show. Well, it's yeah. got to the point now where we just walk in and the Those spirits know and it starts talking. Like, it's I'm be, serious. Like we, we pull stuff out yeah. it's instant now. Like if you see now in like the during the interviews and stuff like we're getting all this uh, evidence it's it's just unreal it's like the longer we've been doing it it seems to just now the spirit so they know you're coming is what they're yeah so we've I had a lot of proof of that too that tell us that oh as soon as you know we started contacting you guys or we started talking about we were going to go there then activity started happening strange things started things happening like that. but the thing is too you got to think we filmed for three days we have hours and hours of footage and you know we investigate all night you know, and what you see is basically like the highlight reel of it. So there is time where we're literally kind of like, all right. Yeah. I, re I review all know, the which... footage. And when I get home from an investigation, like we just did an investigation this week in Pasadena. When I get home, there's 40 hours of footage that I have to go through, find all the highlights. And then I take that to Zach, you know, and show him this is what we've got. And then that's what the episodes are always made of is from the evidence. Why, why would we waste time on anything else? It's like so, fishing, you know, sometimes you, it bites right away and you get tons of stuff and other times you have to wait a little longer and try a different bait, try different things. I think specifically because we've been doing this so long every other week that you you get attuned to it and I mean we do open ourselves up and so we're on their vibration. I just feel like deal. spirits are like oh, these guys will definitely hear me if I want to tell them something, you know. Yeah. So There's a question in the back there. Hi, uh, for the other person who wants to experience I um, mean, you open up that door and it can change everything. Like in Ghost, the movie Ghost with Patrick Swayze, like they may not leave you alone after that. So like, if you're willing to do it, go to some spots that have incredible history that you're allowed to go to because you can't sneak into places. You shouldn't do that. You'll get in trouble. There's no point in doing that. But you can call them up and get permission. But it just has like... If you're from whatever you're from, that area should have something that's dark or spooky, you know. And just make sure you find out the history of it before you just go into it like that. And you know? get like, permission. Yeah, get <laughs> permission. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to oh, investigate the White, the White House, but yeah. I don't think that's going to I want, honestly, I want to investigate Disneyland and the Haunted Music <laughs> Mansion there. That's like my goal, but it probably will never happen, but yeah. And in Egyptian tombs, I'd like to go yeah, there. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. A lot of it's given, like, like we don't really plan ahead so much. Like, honestly, everything, once we get there, it's a live, in a sense, a live investigation. 
You know, we're not, you know, we know, we, oh, we have a few interviews and people that we're going to talk to, but that's about it. And everything else, we just go on the fly. And uh, we travel with everything. So we literally, I mean, TSA must hate us. We have to cry about <laughs> they destroy they like 40 our cases. Plus 40 cases, cases they destroy equipment. Travel, you were saying malfunctions. You know, and so that's because every location is different. So we bring it all, and sometimes we use a little bit, sometimes we use all of it. You know, kind of different, different locations yeah. require different equipment. And if we're not exactly. getting something, we put it down, try something else. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that does get frustrating. It is like nothing's coaching. working. And all of a sudden you put it down, door slammed, <laughs> no one's rolling. And then you get the gear out, and it's game time. It's like, damn it! Like they like it, that happens when we're not rolling a lot. So, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, what do you guys attribute the longevity of the show to? Because I mean, everyone is so intrigued so by what's happening. Chemistry. I yeah. think chemistry. We're all the four of us are very different. Yeah, and it all happened by accident. None of us really knew each other. Like I just helped them out, and all of a sudden was part like what and had a first paranormal experience. Yeah. yeah, and then just kind of like get thrown into things, and then Jay shows up and like find out about him. We become buddies. And I was just a he, Las Vegas DJ that saw the documentary, was intrigued by it. Right. Yeah, oh, total luck. Reached out through MySpace to talk to Zach. I just said, hey, yeah. I saw this documentary. It's awesome. You're in Vegas. I'm in Vegas. And then we met up. And he's like, what do you think about paranormal stuff? I'm like, oh, I'm kind of into it, but I don't know anything about it. And he sent me to Virginia City, and that changed my life. So, and then it just spawned from there. You started listening to the audio, and like it just—it's weird how we formed. And I think it's, what's special about us too is it is us. Like we shoot the show ourselves. We right. do it. Yeah. We don't. There's no there's team no behind. It's like oh, do this or do there's that. No or do that. Like we right. literally, it's literally our adventure, our investigations doing yeah. this. So it's raw. It's real. You know, it has, and I think that passes on. You know, to the viewers, filming it, you it, can feel our show. That, you know. It's not cookie cutter because, like Jay said, when we get there, we have three to five interviews, and from those three to five interviews, like you said, something like, "Well, we'll I talked to so and so that did this," and like, "Let's go talk to so and so." There is no yeah. layout. Like we're gonna film all this, and this is the script. There's no script. It's just we really go in it's there. It's an adventure. It. We, yeah, like oh, we need to go to the bridge, or we need to go over here. And, and when we get there, we're like, "Oh man, here we go!" Like, jeez. <laughs> and then at the end of it, we're like, "Whoa!" We got it all tired. I think that is the secret to the show because all these other shows, and I know a lot of people who have been on shows and, and have their own shows. Um, everything, especially when they don't have control of the show, like right. you guys do, you know, they're kind of at the mercy of the network. Yeah, you know? yeah and hoping something and happens good out of it. It is scripted, it's all yeah. planned out. So. Yeah, I, I worked in television and film for a long time, even before I joined the show. and. I remember when I first joined, I was just the sound guy, like the first year with the show, strictly just their sound guy. And I remember it was the first show I ever worked on where when I finally saw the episode air, and I was like, wow, well, like that's what happened. Yeah. You know, so many other shows, you, right. you know, they twist it and they do all kinds of crazy stuff. But just as a crew guy at the time, I was just like, wow, I was impressed. I was like, this is legitimately what happened and how it went down. So I was and if, from it. Yeah. And if we don't get evidence, we stay longer. And we're just like... We're here until we have something to show people. And sometimes and if we don't get it, that's fine. Like that other it, episode that came up, we got nothing. It was, there was just ended no, up being the house. Happened. We were shocked as you were, but we we're like, well, let's show that's this. The that's what happened. Like, right. We try to debunk us, everything. Uh, and if we can't, like, like, yeah, you didn't have evidence. a lot of evidence. Well, there was no evidence to show. Sorry. That's just the way our show is. Yeah. So, you know, we talked a little bit about how there's something saying how you think yourself and have to work and things like that. A lot of these places are going into are decrepit, like the pencil trees and things like that are falling apart and are dangerous to you physically. Mm -hmm. How do you protect yourself? You know, you're in the dark for dealing with like, you know, those infrareds that are, you know, you can't see right. how do you protect if you yourself see physically? Well, there is yeah. none. You just <laughs> go in and hope to God. You know how many times we've walked in and go, dude, we could fall through the floor. We might die yeah. here. Yeah. And we just go F word and we go in like straight up like there's there's like no prepping it and you don't know 10 years I don't think any of our joints and muscles are quite the same as oh no that, uh, I've hit my head cracked my ribs you name it I'm the clumsiest person alive stairs. so every episode I'm somehow or my hurt. hand and my head went through the door and <laughs> part of the if job you, if, if you see uh, if you see us wearing masks Zach wears masks because his his respiratory I mean, he's very very sensitive yeah very sensitive to, um, we're wearing a mask. If we're saying, wearing a mask, it means there's black mold everywhere. Like, don't breathe any of that. 
And sometimes it's just like, screw it, because you can't hear yourself talk. And like me, I'll right. walk out and just be like, Tra! see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> What's your camera of choice to film with? Mm, uh, we shoot the, the first different. part of the show. Our main cameras are the Canon C300s, which are great. I love them. They're great workhorse. Like you can hike up a mountain with them. They can get dusty, dirty. They get dropped. They get thrown. And I feel like we've run them through a whole gamut of yeah. environmental <laughs> yeah, factors, yeah. and they always held up. So I love those cameras. And then just night vision Sony's, and we have a couple Canons that we use, but we the Sony's seem to have a better everything. Canons seem to be a little more uh, brighter, and we use those yeah. effects cameras a lot. But Sony's are what we walk around. Yeah, interview cameras are different than the, the lockdown yeah. investigation cameras. So. Uh, so, realistically, skeptics abound in this kind of field. But regardless of the skepticism, this is something that people experience. You yeah. Know? And so, for those people that are experiencing this, that might be surrounded by people that don't believe, mm -hmm. how do you suggest that they broach this topic with those people? And for those that are listening that might be skeptical, right. How do you suggest that they support someone that's having this kind of experience? I feel it's like tough. in time, there's been a dialogue that's more open. You know, maybe 10 years ago when the show first started, it was kind of a thing people didn't talk about it as much. You know, I always hear people that say, oh, we saw your show, and it made me realize that I can talk about it, like I can bring this up, these experiences I've had. So I think, you know, it's good on that sense that people are now sharing stories and dialogue. And there's always going to be skeptics, and I don't, not skeptics, I get it, you should question things, you should, you know, and it's not until you have your own personal experience that you can truly fully believe, and I think that's what we've all, like, once you experience it yourself, there's no denying it. And we still even approach things kind of skeptically at first, you know, we'll be like, all right, has this happened, how did that happen, why, like, try to figure it out, and, you know, so I get it, you know, and it's just until they have their own experiences, you know. I was a skeptical believer until Zach said, oh, you want to go to a real haunted place? And he sent me, and I came back changed because I had the experience. It's what I needed. And so then it's just been chasing this get to get more evidence ever since. So that's, yeah. the, and that's the drive. I think kind of what you're saying, people are having experiences, but maybe their family thinks it's crazy and they don't, you know, and they're not, they're lacking that support. There is a community now out there. There's a huge paranormal community. I mean, even just through our, you can, do the hashtag and you'll find tons of people that watch the show and they probably have their own personal experiences. So there is a community out there, you know, even if maybe their direct family members don't believe them or kind of... My brother doesn't it. believe in ghosts. We yeah. have a conversation with him all the time. He's so like, you know, they can find Come it. on, you're, you're saying this stuff is real? It's real. It's real, I, man. I think in five to 20 years, just that's rough, but like we'll have holograms that we can put in our kitchen of some sort of thing that can walk through it and you'll see your family member. I think everyone will believe in ghosts eventually because I think it's just spawn. Like what, 50, 60 years ago you said it, you're in a sane asylum. So it's everyone's afraid to say something. Now more people are talking about it, more people are trying to invent stuff. And I think in the future we will be talking to loved ones or just spirits around. I think it's just going to be part of the whole yeah. life. Has there ever been an experience that made you question if you wanted to continue being on the show? Every lockdown. Okay. All the time. <laughs> I'm always like, I'm going to quit, I swear to God. And then I, there's moments <laughs> I don't, like, but it's like, things. you're so scared, you're like, not worth it. Yeah, like, you not really worth think, it. Like, what else could happen? We've seen this, we've experienced that, you know? And something like, else new. Kind of like, what yeah. else? Then something just happens that blows our minds and it just terrifies us even more. And, you know, it's funny because sometimes we'd be like, this episode's the craziest ever, and then like another one would be like, no, this one's crazy. Like it just yeah, keeps everything's going. Yeah. Different feel, like you're yeah. saying. Yeah. What has been your scariest moments on the show so far? Oh, so many. I couldn't even. <laughs> I couldn't even it's like remember. Like 230 something episodes. There's a lot, but one that stands out. I don't know. Like the one that stands out was when I got grabbed in the ear in Ireland. Like every time I think of something, I think of that moment. Uh, I actually put my blood all over the grave of, at uh, the Jamaica episode and took a piece of her grave and she's been around me ever since. So it's like little things that you just remember and stick out or what follows me home always makes me think of certain lockdowns and like, it's just weird. It's tough. Obviously, shifting gears a little bit, besides ghost hunting, what, what gets each of you out of bed in the morning? Coffee. <laughs> I was, I was that. That's the first thing. Coffee first. Huh? Uh, 
I don't I wish know. I could just yeah. stay in bed with, sometimes. <laughs> me, personally, I have, I have a very creative spirit, so I play music. I like to create art. And, uh, I have a production company, so I do a lot with renting equipment out to other projects and films and things. So it's, I don't know, it's, I always have that passion to be creating, to do something creative, which also helps bring more positivity to my life as well. And so that you know keeps me going when we're not filming. I'm always trying to you know keep my brain going. Spending time with my family and my animals, and um, I love the outdoors. That's what grounds me. So in between the show and that family, so I paint, and then most of the time to like really get in a better mood, like after crazy lockdowns, I usually I go to Disneyland and walk around for a couple of days and just hang out and feel the good vibe, and I feel a little bit better. But before that, I was just oppression for like a year. I just painted and painted in my garage, and then now me and my girlfriend, we like go do all kinds of fun stuff and. So that kind of helps get out of the house. What is the scariest thing in that There's a few. There's a few things, and they're all equally scary. But like the Dybbuk box is top of the list, and uh, I don't like the Demon House room. <laughs> no, I don't like that room either. You know, it's kind of felt better when the house was demolished. And then to like walk into the room and it's reassembled. And he brings you know, part of there. that to the museum. Like you can still feel that energy there. Um, so that, and then Ed Gein's The Cauldron for me, I kind of had a personal experience with that. That definitely sticks for me. It's all been, this, I just look at every single thing there as one same thing. Because it's like they all live together. So mm -hmm. it all scares me really bad. Stuff's go in there. That's why I usually when episodes, I'm in there off time. I'll go in there once in a while, but I usually just paint and stay, I, or hang out in California most of the time. Yeah. What are some upcoming locations that you're looking forward to? And the last few that we filmed, the one that we just filmed in Pasadena. Oh, God. I did something I should never have done. Never done it. Uh, did it. Never will do it again. You'll see. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. It, every episode is different. Every location is different. Yeah. The energies at each location is different. And just when we think we've seen it all, something new happens. Yeah. But the, um, the gentleman that was at the house that we investigated is just a character. He basically, he can summon some he, of the He most can summon spirits and yeah. which we, we did, got total proof of. We did. We did a séance with him, and it was life changing. Yeah. So yeah. I don't usually get involved with that stuff, but we used a Ouija board. So. Uh, would, would you sorry, I've never used it. Did would you you never do it again. Woman? Yeah, we've had a few times. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Have you? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the past. Well, <laughs> 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 a new episode that we're in is just cool. It's like Cerro Gordo. I think. Oh yeah, yeah. It's probably one of the most remote places. Like just to get to this town, it's in California, just past Death Valley. Oh, and yeah. literally to get there, it's a seven mile drive up this dirt road, literally up the mountain, and there's a whole abandoned town up there. Oh, and the road, yeah. like Lily gave you this much room on the side yeah, of the had tire, clip. or you're off. We had jeans like, and stuff. Oh, it was crazy. I guess some good drone shots of the whole <laughs> ride up though. I was like, if this is how I go, I'm gonna be freaking pissed because I'd rather go in the scary. Thing. God damn it! It was, it was scary. Just driving up, just driving up. <laughs> very active. You know, with all the work you guys put into the show and, you know, other shows have done, the paranormal team is not coming, does it bother you guys that a lot of times TV just portrays these shows as entertainment? It doesn't take it seriously. Well, honestly, I probably have maybe, I don't ever watch other shows. Well, I mean, I've, not, like, not, I could have no clue, like, who's on right. what, and I don't know what they do. Like, I just like to concentrate on what we do, so... Yeah. I don't know. I watch yeah, horror movies and laugh. I feel like I, because they're just not it. scary like to me. I, 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 I asked you guys this because twice I almost got my own show, Paranormal Mission. Once we bought Bluff House and then once the uh, North, North South Productions. And um, when we were developing it, it was all about the entertainment aspect of the show, not that they took. Serious right. And existed, and that bothered. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It, it can be upsetting at times. You know, it's frustrating. Like we go through all these, especially personal experiences, and you know, and then there's times we catch some evidence that's like, this is going to change the world. Like this is hands down 
Like, that's it. Like, this proves it. You know, and people love it, and it's a great episode, but it, you know, some people are still just like, meh. You know, it it can be frustrating. But I think at this point, too, like, we experience it. You know, we love doing it. We love our fan base, but it's also, for us, too, it's a personal journey. Yeah, now it's a personal journey. And, you know, we know hands down what we have experienced and what we believe and, you know. It's not even about trying to convince people yeah. it's real. It really isn't. We're just like, yeah, because you guys know it's real. We're on this right. adventure. Right. This is what happened. Right. You know, and that's up to you. I'm a, either I'm a, a skeptical or skeptical believer or whatever. And but, good, if you don't want to believe, that's that, great. That's you're probably better right. off because <laughs> it's scary when you really get into involved and you're like, most people have had an experience it changes everything for them. So... I'd like to go back to something that you guys said a little bit earlier. You talked about how it, they seem to know that you're coming to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So does that seem, I'm sure you've thought about this, does it seem more like it's your energy that's changed or something else with you? Or do you think there's some other sort of connection out there? Well, I think the spirit think? world itself, just like the human world with social media, they can all talk to each other and it's very easy to spread something. I think it's the same concept in the spirit world. Like who's to say their energy just doesn't vibrate through or vibrate through things? And Our intention of wanting to be yeah. there opens us up, and it's kind of like you know a light going off, like hey, I'll talk to you. So the ghost is a perfect analogy. We'll be right. Goldberg. Like <gasps> there's so many hear spirits us. out there. Who's to say they don't go to talk to other places, or they already knew we were going to come months before we found out? Like who, we don't know the afterlife and how it works. And you go into the theory of there is no time. We're the ones that make up time. You know, like. They know we're coming because there is no time. So, you know, the, the second that the intention is we're going to go here, it's already it's happened. It's almost happened. Or so, already I don't know, that's going pretty deep, but. Yeah. <laughs> do you think these spirits want you to be aware that they're out there, or do you think that they're anti? Some. 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 <laughs> Some. Some, like, we've gotten to, and just to get, in it, just to get evidence, mm-hmm. has been like, dude, come on! And then, like, we, this energy happens, and frustration, and all of a sudden, something will maybe will happen. Or, then we get other ones that are clearly, like, get out of here, leave me alone. You know, we get that too. Like yeah. You can tell they don't want the attention and they get aggressive and angry. You're invading yeah. their space. They don't want you. Which if I, when I'm die, I'm pretty much going to be a spirit chill on earth. No matter what, I'm not going <laughs> up or down and I just want to chill and mess with people. And so that everyone. <laughs> <laughs> At Disneyland. At Disneyland. I'll probably be there most of the time. You're My place is on it. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have much interaction with the Annabelle doll? Oh, yeah. What was that like? Oh, yeah. It was uh, when Zach touched that doll, I felt (laughs) like it stayed in the museum. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I honestly felt like when it was in that room, it it was like next to us half the time. Like there was so many moments. It was saying things and just doing stuff. It was Well, I had the I still think it's around me. Some of the energy of it could like separate a little bit to someone. And I've through every time we talk about it in the house or we bought a raggedy dad doll in my house and like literally posters will fly. You'll hear people running, screaming upstairs. Like, oh, my house is so hard. It's awesome. But like (laughs) when you bring these artifacts in, you literally listen and you can hear it like, People screaming and yelling at each other upstairs. It's just crazy. Because it was only in the museum for a short time, right? It was just for oh, that yeah, episode. Just the episode. Yeah. And as soon as he touched it, he was out. Mm-hmm. And I was like, whoa, we're going to get our closure. Like, like or, I think you were about to say with the SLS. Uh, yeah, well, the thing is, I was filming Zach with, with the SLS when he touched the doll. And then it was later that his stick figure, because it will map in a human figure, he had two stick figures. And then the stick figure, the second stick figure left him. And went somewhere into the museum. So that, to me, that's incredible. Yeah. Because it doesn't do two stick figures. Museum. Unless it's mapping something. So It had a host and now it jumped in and who knows. Like, I don't know. I haven't heard much crazy stuff going on with it lately in the news or anything. So who knows? Maybe it left it. Or it's probably still with it. It's probably both. I, I don't know. Goodness. Yeah. <laughs> but it was scary. <laughs> oh. Oh, all the time. Yeah. Done that all the time. Use our energy. That's pretty much, hey, welcome in. Yeah. You know, in like. Goatman's Bridge, I performed the ancient ceremony that basically called upon a demon to come up, but also to get rid of the demon that was there. So, like, we've done stuff like that where, like, you know, the, what's going on kind of calls for things like that. We'll try it out. You know, it can be scary and 
dangerous, but if it works for what we're focusing on, we're, we're going to try it and experience it. We put ourselves through hell just to get evidence, which is probably the most dumbest thing you could do. Yeah. But yeah. Definitely should say, do not try this at home. Yeah, every time. <laughs> just constantly a banner going by like a stock market. Just try to take it. Fact that like you'll go, you'll use your blood, you'll take things from them, you'll enter, you know, ask for your body. And often, like as someone who does a lot of like investigation, those are the things that you're really told like not to don't do don't do these things. things. Right. Um, what do you say like about the fact that like yeah, we can tell people to not do this at home, but it's being you know portrayed there, and you know we tend to be way more aggressive and more. Yeah, I guess aggressive is a good word to try to get these these spirits to interact with you. Then other people yeah. tend to be much more observant and use much more passive tools. And why did you do that and continue to do that? Is it because just that that's the result? It's part of the gig. Yeah. It's part of the job. Like we're the one. We actually do what we do. It's crazy. I like, think we'll at this point, this many it. years in, we're not going to just stop. stop. Yeah. <laughs> now it's too late. We're like so we're that it. crazy I dumb. Then it's just too late. <laughs> keep going and doing it. You know, like. I don't know anyone yeah, in the right mind who would. I think, I think things have calmed down a little bit. Like if it is like a peaceful spirit or a peaceful story, we're not going to go in there yelling and right. you know, kind of being mean to it. But if it's a bully spirit, if it's something dark, if it's something like that, then yeah, we're going to go in. We're going to stand up against it. Yeah. Every location's different. So we do so the rituals spirits. and we consume it and make it and just like go with it mm-hmm. and see what happens. You know, it's weird. It's not smart. Okay, yeah. don't do that. Yeah. That's why, let us do that. Right? <laughs> so what kind of ghosts are y'all going to be? Uh, um, I'll probably be a comedian running around pants and people. I really want, like, if there is a choice, and they go, hey, up there, down there, which I don't think there is a choice, uh, I'm just going to go, nah, and just stay, I think, right. because I don't really want to go up there nor down there, so. Frank, try to chill. <laughs> I'll be running life in the afterlife. Probably just hanging out and doing all the fun stuff right. like I do now. <laughs> you end the show with the lights on or the lights off? <laughs> well, I have to review all the, the footage in the dark. So, And that's another thing. When I, you know, We get done with a shoot and I come home and I have to crunch all the footage and then, and then watch everything. I spend like three or four days. Sometimes if it's a bad investigation, that's like reliving it all yeah. over yeah. again. Because, I mean, mentally, you're, you know, you're there. And um, torture sometimes. I but, used to do that in the back in the day. And I was like, nope, no more. And then yeah, he came yeah, in and yeah. jumped on. So I'm always like, I feel for you, dude. Like he does. He's done way it's longer tough. than I have. But it does. It messes with your head. Yeah. Nightmares. And even just and, watching the episode sometimes. Yeah, it that, comes out. Like, I can't shoot do it. it. And then a few months later, it comes out. And just watching again, like, whoa. That's so you watch really the yeah. episodes. You guys. Actually watch it. Uh, I usually yeah. don't watch it because it's watching a, like a bad home movie. <laughs> yeah, I do. I just watched the clip on the panel and like I started tearing up, shaking. Like I could, I was like, oh my god, I try to like, I guess I blocked that out. Like it's so dramatic to me that I, I guess I forget. And then when I do watch, like, like my girl will be like, are you your your heart rate's pounding? And I'm like, I'm about to have a panic attack just watching that. It's crazy. I watched the the 40 hour version of Ghost Adventures. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Have you ever had a, a spirit go like leave a location with you? Oh yeah, yes. all the time, all the time. Oh yeah. Plus, when you bring an object home, it mm-hmm. kind of with that. So what's what do you weird do is with when that, you... though, do you just look? I mean, they, they 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 in my experience, they usually only hang out a couple days, and if you ignore them like a child that's asking for candy, they'll eventually. Mm-hmm. That's like the the calm human spirits, the ones that are more demonic and stuff don't want you to know that they've followed you home, and that's when bad things start happening. You have bad feelings and just. You get a sense that you know something's not right. That's so the that's, longest I've ever seen. It's day one. Months, Mackie years. has been around. Like I don't know. I don't get rid of them. So I always invite them to come. Like when I leave the location, lo- okay, I know I've gotten crazy. But I walk out. I'm like, if you want to come with me, come with At me. And I leave. Knows it, right? And like I have like a hundred cursed objects that, from locations in my house. And my girlfriend and her and I will just sit there and just all kinds of crazy stuff. Too. Like, it's almost like we're always in a lockdown. But like mm-hmm. not trying to investigate it, just observing it. It's scary. Like, I've had stuff move across the floors, put, like, I, you name it, I've had it. Do you think it's true, like, the Post Malone stuff that they're talking about, all the stuff that's happened since? I do. It's, it's kind of crazy how that all just happened yeah. all of, right around that yeah. time. Why yeah. would they open the box? 
Good question. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. I touched the box. And I was like, that was the dumbest thing to do. But I mean, it's one of those things where it's we like, do it. <laughs> it's crazy, but there's also such an adrenaline rush with this stuff that you know you almost do become addicted to it. It's like oh, it's like you know, there's moments we'll be on the road filming, and by the end we're like, oh, we just want to go home. We're so worn out and tired. And you get home, and then a few days after being home, it's like. I'm ready, ready to go. go. You yeah, gotta get back go out again. there, you know. I jump out of airplanes a lot, not a lot, but I I want to do solo. But every time I've gone to train, I've cracked a rib, so I'm like, obviously I'm gonna mess up. So I don't. But like, that's nothing compared to ghost hunting. Like, I literally when I jump up, like, God, it's not even close <laughs> to the rush. And I'm just like, here we go, we gotta wait to get down. But yeah, it's crazy. Like, it's the biggest adult rush you've ever had, and it's not the safest thing to do. How do you wind back down from something? Nature. I, I paint and then uh, go to Disneyland. I know it sounds crazy, but the good vibe there. Like I'm a big member there at Club 33, so I just enjoy everything I can. Like, it's we, great. We call it the lockdown hangover. Like, yeah. Some intense one. I literally feel like you have a hangover for like three or four days sometimes. And, you know, and like we were kind of saying earlier, just finding you know whatever it is positivity to bring back to you to ground you and kind of get your energy back to normal. And then you go right back out. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Let's say, let's say you go to Disneyland a lot. Do you ever feel spirits? Oh, all the time. I'll, I bring gear, Where? and I'll just oh, Haunted Mansion is the best. Haunted yeah, uh, but literally anywhere and everywhere because it's just the vibe. Like it when, a lot of people when they're like, when I pass away, I'm just gonna go live there. Like it, they probably can't walk there. The spirit walks there, and it's there. Like there's so much emotion, so much vibe. I think it brings out everything. It's like even place on earth. It, it is until you hear the kid who wants to leave, and then he's upset. There's like that moment, but it's cheaper admission. That yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just love walking through because it just it's like ah oh, okay. I grew up here, and now everyone's just the kids like, and the parents are like oh you know at the first part in the night it, it's a little different because everyone's just so tired. But I don't know. It just seems to like make me put a big smile on my face and then have a drink up upstairs and get some really good food. And, Go do the rides. It's like, yeah. Have you ever learned a little bit more about the theater? Like, the physical things like the adrenaline rush is like, control? Like, why? No, the fear is, oh, I am so dumb and I shouldn't <laughs> have done this. And then all of a sudden it happens and afterwards you're so scared, you're like, whoa, that was awesome. And I, should I do that again? No. But you do because it's just, it's like a, it's like fighting a UFC fighter with no. Right. You don't know how to fight. Fear's different. <laughs> Fear's different for scary. Scary than him. Yeah. It's, well, yeah, it, 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 it is the feeling of once you get to that point, and like, or maybe you've invited a spirit in, or you're trying to get evidence, and so you open yourself up a little too much. Uh, then you have that feeling where you just you know that something's there with you. The real fear sets in. Like, what could happen? Could they stop my heart? Right. Could Black you know? Uh, the cause me to have an aneurysm? Like, who knows? Because we don't. It's the unknown. We don't know what a spirit really could do to you. You know. I think that's such like a, an archaic thought in like the human psyche as to what happens after we die. And it's such a fear that, you know, I don't care who you are, you say you're not. Like everybody has that fear and of the unknown and what's going to happen. And we face that directly all the time and explore it. So there's that fear as well. Like, and then kind of to add what Billy was saying, the fear of, you know, you see things, you see something lift up and go flying across a room. That's pretty scary when something grabs you and pulls you backwards and there's nothing there. Like that's scary. Or a door slams. Right. Or saying that there's things shirt. beyond our reality. You know, there's things but outside of our perception of reality right that do exist, and we don't fully know what they're doing and what it all is. But you know, we are lucky enough to be able to explore that and research it. And, you know, it's always evolving, always learning new stuff. It's scary. Two more questions. In the back. If you, have, if you were a doctor, you know, people come up to you when you're out of the hospital, hey, I have this, I have that, <coughs> never off the clock. Have you guys ever off the clock? Not really. Not really. No, even sleeping, the nightmares and the just the emotion of it all. I don't, I don't know. Never Even off the like clock. friends and family, they always like to share their stories with us and things they've seen. So you don't quite get a break from it. And if you are, someone may come up and go, do you remember that time? And then, bam, you're like in like, PTSD mode, like oh, like I'm on the clock again, like. But I'll hear a noise or something in the house. I'm like straight up, like ready to grab my gear, like. But there's not. It's just. It's crazy. I think we're always on the clock. Yeah. It's, Especially it's you, life. you're watching it's not even, it. Because I'm watching it. Like, yeah. So it's, it's not it's, just a job. Like it's actually we dedicate our lives to this. Yeah. It sticks around. For sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Was your first ghost experience on the show or before you did the show? Uh, my, so I guess when I was a kid, my mom said I always talked to this pirate and these ghosts and all this stuff would happen weird around me. And I could always like say, oh, a cop's going to pull you over, mom. And she's like, what? And it would, you know, or something like that. Then I went to this puberty stage where you just forget about everything. And then um, then my real first experience was uh, at uh, the Washoe Club. That was the, and then I picked up the EVP uh, at the miner's cabin. That's when I was like, hey, I'm never doing this again. See you later. And then you just kind of have that, at, well, well, okay, it's I'll come out with you guys again. And next thing you know, you're in it. It's, so that's, that's the that's problem. Your first you start ghost hunting. Was, that was, was the Washoe Club? Was your first experience? My first one that I can remember. And really that was for remember. me, too. So that's kind of a weird uh, oh, yeah. synchronicity. Yeah. yeah. I think for me, it was when I was a kid, I was into it as a kid and explored it. And I remember, long story condensed for almost out of time, I was doing the Ouija board uh, when I was a teenager and started communicating with some kind of spirit that kept saying its name was uh, Z-O, which at the time I had no idea what that meant. And years later, find out about Zozo. But uh, it kept saying all these things, saying as a little kid, so we invited it, saying, oh, can you come into us, you stupid teenagers? And it said yes. And then, uh, so we allowed it, we opened ourselves up. A friend of mine actually jumped up with a dagger that we had laying around. It's a whole other story, but and actually pulled it out and got on top of me and was trying to stab me in the throat. And the look, I remember the look in his face still to today. Like he was just gone. And it's the same look I've seen like with these guys, with Zach sometimes, where like something overtakes you and it's not you. And I was holding him back and I was shaking and the knife was right here and he was trying to push it in my throat and all of a sudden he just snapped out of it, started full crying, had no idea what happened. And I was like, All right, I'm done with that and and then I never touched a Ouija board again for years, and then so they kind of came back around. Damn, Jay. I don't know if I can hang out with you. <laughs> you do the Ouija board? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I guess one more question. Who didn't? Anybody that didn't get? Someone one? that didn't get to ask a question, maybe. Is there anybody that wants? To? Go ahead. Can you talk about something surprising and uh, beneficial that you might have gotten from the benevolent spirits? Hmm. Which experience? I, I have I have several. There's been locations that we've been to, and even though it didn't make it to the, the episode or whatever, I felt it necessary because I felt like I was in communication with maybe a spirit that needed help or that was trapped there or whatever. I would just do a little thing that I've talked to different psychics and stuff about, you know, creating white light in your mind, and you connect with the spirit, and you just tell them, you know, you don't have to stay here. And I've said that on the show many times, that you don't have to stay here, you're not trapped. Just by telling them that and, you know, trying to help them, um, just, I've had spirits follow me home, benevolent spirits, mm -hmm. and then I did it at my home. And I, just this overwhelming feeling of just, that you helped someone. It's hard to explain. And I don't know if, if I really did or not, or if that was just in my mind, but it, something tells me that I, that I was able to help them. So, I do that whenever I can. Well, thank you guys for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. One last photo. That's fine, but we can't. Um, we don't have time for selfies or anything. So sorry. If you're ready for some more fun and you'd like to check out the latest episode of the Daily Dope, my live Monday through Friday show that airs at 7 p.m. Central, right here on YouTube click right here. And if you'd like to roll the dice and push your luck and see a randomly selected video from the channel, click right here. You pays your money, you takes your chances. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer and thank you for watching.